we are going to do publishing, we are going to publish the answer. All this we've been doing, let's publish and see the final product. And uh, I don't know how much time I have, because I've, I've realized uh, we, we should have done two weeks for this conference. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah, because you can see, like, I think one day you just do one thing. The next day you do another thing. Instead of doing three things in one day, then we would have done justice. So I think the organizers, uh, Madam President is here. Mr. President is also here. I think uh, they are listening to that. So maybe next time, and, and the bosses, the, the, the benefactors are also here. So we can do two weeks in the next conference. Uh, <clears throat> we will have our first speaker. When, when they taught me English, those days I still used to go to school. Uh, the name I've been given here, I shouldn't say. So I will skip the, the, the honorific and call Moses from the Parliament of Uganda to make his presentation in 15 or 17 minutes. 15, 17. Then we can listen to uh, Dr. Ranga, who will be making a rejoinder in another 13 or 23 minutes. Then the panel can walk in and each panelist can have, uh, how many panelists do we have? Let me confirm if Mr. Nutumi is around. Yes, I can confirm. Mr. Kenneth Chubi, I hope that is the pronunciation. Kenneth Chubi? Chubi. Is Chubi around? Huh? Is Chubi around? And Kenneth? None of the above, eh? Uh, Marsabit County Assembly. Marsabit? Mm, Tarakanithi? Tarakanithi? I, Mr. Seme, you panel, I know what to do. If they are not there, I will just choose panelists from two from every row. Uh, Nairobi? Oh, thank you. That's Nairobi. Turkana. Turkana has been uh, overly present, actually. Yeah, so we will have Turkana, Nairobi. You said and Mutungi. And uh, in the course of these two presentations, I will identify another two panelists. Samburu. Samburu is coming in. Who wants to volunteer? Yeah, we'll, I will look for two other county assemblies to, to sit with us here. Uh, Parliament of Uganda, kindly. Ah, 
projector. So that we can see the situation. Mm. Yes. There you go. Oh, we're just looking for the prejudice that mm. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, I would prefer that uh, I don't want to split screen. Yes, I would. So what you do? What is it? You must have fun. That is run. No, this is run. Any task? All that one? I'll just shut down and we'll restart. Let's shut down. Down here. Let's close the record. Copy that. Yeah, we have that last time. Good. I just want it to. Ah, I want it all on the screen, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is Moses Boalatum. I'm from the Parliament of Uganda. I uh, bring you greetings from uh, I bring you greetings from our leadership and from the staff as well. Uh, for those who have not been to the Parliament of Uganda, if you were to walk in there or to drive in, this would be a driveway, or this is how you'd walk in. This is the aerial view. Should you be flying over? Uh, about KQ or whatever flight. And uh, these are our presiding officers. This is uh, to the left, uh, Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Anita Mong. And to the right, the Deputy Speaker, uh, Right Honorable Thomas Taewa. And this is our technical head, our CEO, uh, um, Mr. Kaisaija. This is a special room in the sense that uh, it's referred to as the Kenya room uh, because of the wood paneling that you see right uh, behind there. The whole of it is surrounded by five wood panels and they were a gift from the people from the Republic of Kenya. We appreciate your gesture. When you have occasion to come to the Parliament of Uganda, please, uh, this should be one room you should uh, go to. It's named the Kenya Room. 
um, to our topic of presentation today, publishing the handset. Um, Mr. Dong, who was here, uh, talked of publishing the handset. And plainly put, publishing the handset is about making it accessible or available to the public. That is what we understand by publication of the handset. There are processes involved in having that done. And we are familiar with this, given the legislatures that we come from. It starts with recording and at the same time publishing. If uh, you are doing uh, live casting, uh, like we're doing now uh, in Hack. So the moment you start recording and also you're doing live broadcasting, you'd already be publishing. But then if you'd be doing the print version of it, you would now go through the other processes that entail uh, transcription. In the Parliament of Uganda, we have uh, uh, our levels of transcription. Uh, the first level of transcription is done by an assistant editor of Hansard. And then the second level is the senior assistant editor of Hansard. And it goes on like that to the principal, uh, deputy, um, and editor. So the processes proceed to the editing. We edit for clarity. We edit for uh, consistency to ensure that certain things uh, keep the same all through the hands document. And then overly, it is then published on the website. Converted to PDF, published in the intranet for the case of the Parliament of Uganda, that's what we'll do. And, and then on the website. Uh, as I started earlier with recording, this would also be then on YouTube running. Why should it concern us to, to publish the handset? You notice that uh, in our legislatures, we have, uh, we have elected representatives. We cannot all have the citizens of Kenya or Uganda or our respective states in this small house. So we have their representatives. And it's important for them to be open in their conduct for the people who sent them there to see what they are doing, to hear what they are doing, and also to account. There are times when um, our elected representatives are meant to represent the interests of the electorate there. And if I could just cite the case in point of uh, a, contra a con controversial legislation, uh, that the Parliament of Uganda passed known as the Anti-Homosexuality Act. Um, this was uh, an act that uh, had a lot of interest within and without. And uh, everyone was glued on the TV, everyone was glued on the social media handles, uh, YouTube, amongst, amongst others. And they wanted to hear what, how their representatives are going to vote. Are they going to vote yes to the passing of this act, or are they going to vote no? And uh, of course, there were a few that had uh, conflict among them. You have your elected representatives uh, recommending this, and you feel uh, you should vote either no. Uh, the other important reason why we publish is for historical purposes. As um, people who produce the handset, we do a very, very noble task because we, we document history. Nowhere in our countries is history uh, put together than in our assemblies because that is where even our the inaugural independence speeches and key pronouncements are made. So the handset is a historical record of what happens in not only in our parliaments, but also nationally. The other reason why we publish it for real information purposes. Um, people need to know what is going on, even just knowing how uh, bills come low, uh, among other things. It's also a critical legal reference. We've had that said again and again. It's oftentimes needed by courts of law when they are adjudicating uh, on important laws, probably that uh, probably some persons feel have not been passed right or infringe on certain aspects of the constitution. 
So they'll often call up the handside to try and pick into the minds of, uh, of the MPs, what did they have behind their minds when they are passing such legislation. So this is to say that the work that we do is very, very important, and we ought to be uh, very proud of the work that we do as Hansard editors, as reporters. Yeah. Tenants of publication in the Hansard. I know I'm not uh, preaching to the choir because uh, these are things that we all know. Uh, they may just be worded differently, but we do this every day. Um, accuracy. The other word for tenants would really be principles of publishing the Hansard. Um, we strive to ensure that uh, the Hansard is free from any alterations or omissions. And now we are talking about even going AI. AI. And when I was listening to um, a YouTube video that was shared, uh, you know, when, when the, 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 the clip about uh, Parliament of Kenya uh, to introduce uh, AI. Yeah, I came across uh, a clip where one of the MPs, David Sankok, uh, I think he had a complaint about uh, certain aspects of our work. I don't know. Um, I, I think there was a clip which wasn't complete. And you know, with technology, um, anything is bound to happen. There can be recording going on, and any hitch can uh, affect the completeness of the answer, because I do not think that as a staff of answer, we have interests in the legislative process for which we deliberately not put all the information that should be there. So there was this that happened and uh, making reference to our rules committee in parliament, again on issue of accuracy, and for which I think it's important that as parliament to so do a bit of outreach to, to our communities. Um, in this rules committee, one of the MPs was uh, uh, accused of not having conducted himself properly uh, during the debate in the House for misconduct wanting, and was referred to the rules committee. Among its other things, um, the Department of Hansard was asked to present the video record and also the, the transcript of that day. So having presented that, that was kind of like exhibit. And at uh, the time of cross-examination, because uh, uh, the lawyer of this MP uh, was represented in the, uh, was uh, representing the member who, who, who did not conduct himself well. So in the course of his cross-examination, he did cite a certain section of the answer that had been edited. Well, it, oh my god, just that thing. Uh, in, <laughs> he cited, um, the, the speaker did say that I refer the honorable member, I will not cite his name, to the rules committee for disciplinary. The answer editors added the word action. So this lawyer, seeing that addition of the word action, decided to capitalize on that to make it look that the hands had distorts information just because the word action wasn't there. You as truly, who was facing the barrage of questions, explained that you see as editors of answer, not everything can be placed there. We take out some redundant words that shouldn't be there, false parts, and also we edit for completeness. So it would sound better to say uh, the honorable member is referred to the rules committee for disciplinary action. Yeah, but uh, unlike the media that was also covering, they, they actually captured that we doctor proceedings. And that was from a point of ignorance because that was just edited for clarity. And even then, by our title alone, we are editors of answered. Yeah. So quickly, um, timeliness. The other tenant is that the handshot should be available really on time. When we uh, go through these processes, editing and all, we should ensure that uh, it's available to the public 
24 hours or 48 hours after a sitting and not after a week or uh, sometimes for reasons beyond our control it may take longer than a day or two it's also important that it's complete meaning that uh, whatever item on the order paper of that day that was considered should be included in the handset and our legislatures endeavor to do this it should also be impartial in the sense that our personal biases should not come and reflect upon that which we are editing or uh, seeing forth, uh, sending forth to the public. The other is accessibility. Um, we, we try very much to ensure that the hand side is accessible to the public, but I think sometimes either due to resource constraints or others, you find that uh, certain key segments, minorities, like uh, um, those who are blind, and may need to use Braille, cannot access the handset because of, uh, I think, the absence of resources. I don't know whether in the parliament, of, uh, in the Senate, or uh, we do Braille. In the parliament of Uganda, we are not able to do this because of financial constraints, but we ensure that uh, what goes forth, uh, at least is complemented by sign language interpretation. So what do we need to take note of when we are publishing the handset? Well, it's important that uh, the information is clear, of course, with uh, the task done in uh, producing like repetition and removal. Any information that has been pushed answered for is edited out. Um, consistency. When publishing the handset, you want to ensure that uh, the answer that I see today is the same answer that I also see tomorrow. It should have a consistent feel about it in terms of formatting or headings uh, or the font type that you use, even the font size. Just like you'd see a newspaper, um, be it uh, whether Citizen or Standard or Nation, for example, it should be the same Nation paper you'll see tomorrow, yesterday, and in future. So we should have that common feel about it. And uh, the other is core agenda. We will often make corrections, especially to the handsets that we're then going to bind into a monthly volume, which I'll get to uh, later. I don't know whether to skip this because of time. What are some of the mistakes we make in publishing? Um, it has happened a lot with us, not a lot sometimes in the parliament of uh, Uganda, where we, you in, without intent, you swap, you, you don't get the titles right. I will cite an example of a member of parliament called uh, Chen Dokas. Dokas, for some of us, may, may have it spelled as a D O R C, maybe A S. But then there is also that with the U. Okay. So in our attribution, and for which it took serious offense and made uh, uh, formal complaints, though we handle it later. But this arose also because of the rating. In the Parliament of Uganda, NPs are rated. And uh, when you call her in one instance, Dorcas with a U, and then in another with an A, those are seen as different people. So when the guys who do the rating, the, Afri the African, uh, I don't know, I, I don't quite remember the full acronym, uh, a full, uh, uh, full uh, name. When they do their ratings, they publicize them in the national papers and the rank entries in terms of uh, A, A, B, C, D, F to F being really the poorest. And this person complained because in having her name written at times as a, a docker with a U and the other with an A, you were referring to different people near these are the same person. We learned from that and that was corrected. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, like I said, uh, these are things that we are familiar with. In natural see, if you don't get it right, uh, I've given some examples there that you can read. Um, it can also, uh, we cannot be taken seriously if we have typos in what we'll be publishing. 
if a member of NEC said uh, uh, this will whet your appetite and you understand what with the WE, then it becomes a problem uh, instead of the WHET to mean wet appetite. Um, but formatting. If today you are using Times New Roman, then tomorrow you are using whether Tahoma or Garimon, um, you don't present the handset well and it doesn't look professional. Forgetting to spell check, that comes back again to simple mistakes that we make. We should always be consistent with that. The aesthetics of publication. Our handsets are normally black and white because we deal in text. So something is either bold and it's then not bolded. Uh, it will rarely have pictures except for a cover. So unless we are making other publications that are not the handset, that is where issues of color may come in. But even where they do, we'll be sensitive to, to avoid particulars uh, when uh, illustrating some of our uh, uh, publications. Uh, colleagues will read that. In publishing the handset, we do daily publication, we don't do weekly, we do monthly bound volumes, which is really a collection of uh, the daily handsets bound into one book. And this is what it would look like. It would be consisting of the sittings of the month all put in there and bound. Um, let me run quickly to uh, publishing on YouTube. Um, there are certain considerations we need to take note of when publishing on YouTube. One, our video needs to be clear and so should the audio. When you have poor audio, the video or the content will not be appealing to anyone who would be uh, watching it. There is also a need to be consistent as to when we post content. Whenever house is on, you should always be able to go live and I hope you're not constrained by data. And the other critical issue is uh, search engine optimization. Um, when we post, it's important that one, assuming, uh, take an example of this video that is uh, running right now, that uh, you optimize your content by ensuring that you capture the essence of that subject that you're posting. Um, have the title, have the, the, the hack, yeah, the Hanford Association of Kenya, and probably also the theme, and some of uh, where it is taking place here at Naivasha, among other things. So you have these key terms captured in your title, in the video description, and also on the tags. That way, should uh, any member of the public want to search for the hack, this is easily picked up and it ranks high on uh, your search. There is also the issue of using closed captions. When we post on YouTube, it's important that we turn on the closed captions such that uh, for those who are hearing impaired, they're able to read uh, the, the captions. And that also increases reach because uh, someone who cannot then uh, uh, see, cannot hear, uh, can, can read for themselves. They may not be totally accurate, but it helps. It gets a point home. Um, we also encourage to pin a comment. Normally, after when you post, it's important to, you can, you can comment by either asking a question so that it draws the engagement to the video that you've uploaded. And then most importantly is to share then your YouTube uh, link on uh, social media platforms that might be there, whether Twitter, Facebook, and whatever that you use frequently to encourage engagement. Uh, that's how I've rushed and thank you for listening. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Moses, and the Parliament of Uganda. We have listened to an insider, and uh, 
from what I've picked, he's told us three things. What we publish, why we publish, and how we publish. Uh, next, we are going to listen to, so this is an insider looking inwards. We want to listen to an outsider looking inwards. An expert in publishing, but not a member of the Hansard, so that we take other perspectives, probably things we might want to include in our publications. Uh, Dr. Ranga from the University of Nairobi, Karibu. Thank you very much, Mr. Dongo, um, and everybody. Allow me to begin by saying that uh, the time I've been accorded is the worst anybody can be given in any situation like this one after lunch, but I try, I'll try my best to make sure that uh, you listen to me. Let me also begin by challenging you. As handsome people, we are meant to be communicators, isn't it? Yeah, but we've been reflecting very poor communication skills, okay, that we can't keep time of the things that you're saying. We should be able to say so much in very few words. I promise I'll stick to my team or maybe earlier. Okay. Oh, 23 minutes. Okay, so what I'll request is that when I'm remaining with three minutes, maybe you don't just do that, eh? to tell me, wind it up, then I'll wind it up. Okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Oranga James. I teach journalism and communication studies at the University of Nairobi. I also consult widely for Parliament. There are so many things we do together. So yes, I'm an outsider looking in, but with inside linkages. Now, when I look around today, I promise to behave myself because there are some things I can't say in front of certain people here. I see certain classmates. Nyasani, uh, where are you? Aha, uh -huh, all right. Joe Kongo, where are you? All right. Stacy, where are you? Aha, uh -huh, all right. I also see several people whom I have taught. I won't name them because I don't want to eat into my 23 minutes. Maybe now 21. Eh? Uh, those students of mine who are here, if you thought I feel good, uh, thank you very much. Okay. I also see people whom I've interacted with in various professional capacities. I see Bonawanyoko here. So I promise today I'll behave. There are things I won't say. I want to take you back in time to the classical period, specifically during the Roman civilization. That was the first time this word published was used. And in Latin, the language that the Romans spoke, they used the word publicus. Later on, it refers to public care, which means to make public. What is the import of that? That this thing you call Hansard, it is a public document. Members of the public are going to interact with it. And therefore, if it has certain professional weaknesses, they are going to ridicule it. So what must we do to make sure that every time this information is in the public domain, it is appreciated and understood by those who access it? I will not repeat what Moses has said, actually. He did very well. I wish he had more time. But I want to tell you three stories just to underscore the things he was saying. Story number one, and before I narrate this one, how many of us are, uh, belong to this category of people called Born again Christians. Could I see? Okay, yeah. The born, the born again guys will excuse me. It's a true story, so I don't know how to say it. We in the media, we say we must inform the public of the good things that the born again guys like, but we must also inform the public about the bad things because they happen in society anyway. Isn't it? Good. So, story number one one of my friends, a lady, a very beautiful lady, I wish I met her when I was younger was one day sharing with me a story that a gentleman she met somewhere 
who developed had interest in her. So they got talking, they got talking, and nowadays as it happens, we exchange information using SMS, isn't it? One day they really found herself in a situation whereby she needed to spend money and she had no money on her investor. So the first person that came to her mind was this gentleman who had an interest in her. So she sent the gentleman an SMS and told her, please assist me with credit for 250 I'll refund you as soon as possible. Then the gentleman sent her the 250 and immediately after the gentleman sent two sms's in quick succession and then and the sms's read this way it was the same sms please confirm sorry please acknowledge receipt of the funds i have advanced you so they responded and told her is this too much english for 250 shillings <laughs> what am i saying your choice of words in anything you do is very important. And sometimes, when I interact with the parliamentary documents, including the answer, like there's a training I did for Mr. Wanyoko's group, I first of all collect all the reports that you've written, and I read them back to back, and I see those kinds of things, okay? So be mindful about your language. Even if it is when you're editing, avoid the too much English. Story number two. In 1631, in classical England, something was going on that was a groundbreaking, trailblazing revolution. Publishing, this thing you call publishing, had just started. And so the Christian Bible was being published for the first time in very large numbers. King James I of England had commissioned a publisher, a printer, to print a copy of the King James Version Bible. When the guy was printing the Ten Commandments, for reasons I don't know, who can tell us, where are those guys who say they are born again Christians? Who can tell us, what does the Seventh Commandment say? Let's start it from there. What does the Seventh Commandment say? Thou shalt, thou shalt not commit adultery. The printer, for whatever reason, forgot to put the word not in that statement. So the Bible went out with that section printed, thou shalt commit adultery. Do you know what happened, ladies and gentlemen? Christianity became very popular. Okay. <laughs> but later on, the correction was detected, the, the mistake was detected, and the correction was made. So if you are not accurate, Moses, you're talking about accuracy, those are the kind of things that you can end up passing, and it leads the document into serious ridicule. So accuracy, very important. Story number three, and the last one. Again, touching on the word again, Christians. How many of you believe that if you die, even if you're Muslim, by the way, how many of you believe that if you die, that on the day of your physical death, there's a part of you called a spirit that remains alive? How many of you, how many of you believe that? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh... There is no such thing, but feel free to disagree with me. As an academic, I say one of my philosophical underpinnings is that everything I believe, I could be wrong. Now, there are those Christians who believe that. Then there are those Christians who believe that if you die, you are dead. You are physically dead, you are spiritually dead. It is until the Messiah returns that you resurrect for judgment. Now, that disagreement comes as a result of what we're discussing here, publishing. There is a section in the Bible, and that confusion is brought about simply by a comma, a mere comma. On the day Jesus died, you remember what happened? He was crucified by how many guys? Two thieves. Eh? And then one thief told him, if you're indeed the Messiah, why don't you save yourself and also save us? Then the other thief said, no, this man is innocent, but we deserve what happened to us. Then what did Jesus say next? That is where that confusion arises. Whether when we die, we are dead, dead, or whether we die, we are dead physically and alive spiritually. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, today you will be in paradise. Now listen to me very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This is how a comma can make the difference of everything you're saying. In some Bibles, it goes this way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, comma, today you will be in paradise. Are we together? 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, comma, today you will be in paradise. So the Christians who believe that you are physically dead and spiritually alive say, Jesus told that thief that today we will be together where? It means there was a part of them that would be alive. But some Bibles have it this way. Verily, verily, I say unto you today, comma, you will be in paradise. The meaning changes completely, isn't it? Aha! Dear editors, mind where you put the commas. It can totally change the meaning of what you're trying to say. Okay? So, accuracy. Ladies and gentlemen, I was once, before I became an academic, I had a short stint in the media. I once went to Yangata prison to do something different. I found a lady there who was there with her daughter. And they touched me just the way they looked. So I asked them, why did you come here? And they told me that we were hungry. We stole our neighbor's chicken. We were caught. We were arrested. On the charge sheet, do you know what the cops wrote as the crime? The cops wrote, stock theft. And you know in Kenya when you say stock theft, you know what, what, what that can mean? Okay. I told Mr. Wanyoko, I saw that in some reports in parliament. They wrote stock theft. And I told her, was it stock theft? Only a couple rustling, I it was like the chicken this people stole. All right. You know, just your choice of words. Now for me, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you three questions that you need to consider in making publications in the hands are better. The first, there is an ethical guideline, Moses, I wanted to add to your list. We call it, in journalistic publications, we call it responsibility. That everything we put in print or we put in broadcast must not offend the ethos of those we target with it. So, for example, if a Mwishimiwa would use unparliamentary language, I do recall when I was in high school one time, a member of parliament in Kenya was so upset with another and they referred to that other one as Machiata, which in some language means excrata. Would you put that in the answer? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. so it doesn't matter how scandalizing the thing would be. Uh, I would propose, ladies and gentlemen, and I, t I, I say this all the time when I meet with parliamentary groups, I do say, there is the situation as it is, the way you do things. Then there is the situation as it ought to be. I would imagine that in terms of communicative decency, if somebody uses language that is very unpalatable, for a document such as the Hansard, you may want to go for a euphemistic equivalent. All right? A euphemistic equivalent. Uh, for example, Moses, I saw in one of your slides, I saw WTF. Uh, in Kenyan social communication, WTF means something I can't even say. But assume Amrishimewa said WTF in poll in the floor of the house. Would you publish that in the answer? Oh my God. That is as it is. But I think as it ought to be, maybe you need to look for a euphemistic equivalent. My opinion. Okay. Better than outsider. Let me, that's one thing I like to say. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Long sentences. Moses. What does that mean? You know, it might sound interesting that as editors in a conference like this one, we say, let's avoid long sentences, okay? But what does that mean? 10 words? 30 words? What determines when a sentence is long? Is it the number of words? Is it the choice of words? In fact, Americans are so obsessed with making things short that nowadays they have something what, that they call eclipse of words. So instead of saying rehabilitation, they say what? Rehab. Okay? Instead of saying juvenile, they say what? Juvie. Okay? Instead of saying nuclear, they say what? Nukes. And that's accepted. When we say long sentences, what we mean is this. That a sentence should not be one that can be broken into two or more sentences. Are we together? Anytime you have a situation 
where you have a statement that can be broken into two sentences, break it. When something can be two or more sentences, we call them run-on sentence, and they tend to confuse readers. So a long sentence, what does that mean? Break it down so that an editor understands clearly this is not a long sentence. Because sometimes we assume long sentences are simply defined by the number of words. No, it's the number of sentences that can stand alone. Okay? Titles, titles, titles. And you guys have a big problem. Uh, this guy told me all about it. I know. The Rashimi are your bosses. And now you have to accumulate with all their bad manners. Their authority bad manners should not come above professional values. Honorary titles, for example, to get a PhD the way myself and a few colleagues here have is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. So just because you're an MP and some university somewhere put something above your head you want to call it, it is not allowed, just so you know. Honorary titles are not allowed for official referencing. That is simply the official rule. So if you're going to be referring to this guy as a doctor because he was given honorary somewhere, shame on you. Actually, you are ridiculing yourself. I put say, ladies and gentlemen, I can't remember which year at the University of Nairobi, an assistant minister who was a Mheshimiwa decided to wear the graduation regalia during graduation. The guy was the assistant minister for education. The guy assumed, being that he's second in rank in terms of education administration in Kenya, and he's an official invitee of a graduation ceremony, the minister then was a master's degree holder, so the minister was clad in graduation regalia. So this assistant minister also wore the graduation regalia. <laughs> the vice chancellor of the University of Nairobi then Professor Philip Mbibi. You remember him, the prophet? He asked the assistant minister to remove it. Don't take my word for it. Go check it online. It was extremely scandalous. Ladies and gentlemen, a day is coming. A day is coming. When I, like my former boss, Professor Magoa, may become the cabinet of education, I'm going to ask you to expunge those honorary doctorates that you put in your answer from the answered records. Because it is not allowed. Yeah, so let's not be breaking rules to suit the ego of these guys. You need to tell them the right thing to do. Okay? AI. Uh, my friend Dr. Koyabi will talk about this at length. I just want to touch on one thing. Nowadays, for accuracy, there are many computer apps we can use to make sure the document is clean. It has no grammatical errors. It has no factual errors and so on. There's one called spell check. It's particularly very good. But there's a catch, ladies and gentlemen, when we use those things, so be very careful. Spell check, for example, is aligned to American English. So if you are going to use spell check as an app to make sure that there is grammatical accuracy in the document, then you have to be conscious of the fact that it is aligned to American English. And I want to add to something that uh, the gentleman from Kilif in the morning was saying, okay? That... American English and British English vary at various levels, not just the level of spelling. The level of spelling is one level. There is the level of vocabulary that we need to be very careful. You as an answered reporter, Amishimiwa has mentioned some things, but in American English. Are you aware, for example, what the British call petroleum? What do the Americans call it? Gasoline, gas or gasoline. What the British call a car boot? What do the Americans call it? A trunk. What the British call a cupboard? The Americans call it a what? A closet. What the Brits call napkins? The Americans call them what? Diapers. What the British call aerial? The Americans call it what? Antenna. So British, that is the level of vocabulary. At the level of grammar, the Americans would say, the British would say, the time is 20 minutes past 2. The Americans would say, the time is 20 minutes after 2. When a Mwishimiwa says that, and you want your answered record to be consistent to British English, are you able to pick that out? And if you use this app, it will allow you to what? American English. So you need to have that consciousness if you're making use of those apps. Something else for you to think about. Is it allowed, ladies and gentlemen, 
in Hansard report something to consider to have footnotes. What is a footnote? Mary, what is a footnote? Mary, I can harass because she was one of my students once upon a time. What is a footnote? In eh? mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Okay. It's a statement that gives further explanation to some focal point in the main body of a document. Is it okay to consider having footnotes in Hansard? Because sometimes when I read copies of Hansard, there are things I'm not understanding. Thank you. All right. Uh, pardon? All right. So, maybe considering can we have footnotes? Because we need to think about what value addition will that have to the Hansard record. Okay, that is something to, to consider. My own life, jargon and bombastic. I wish Joe was here. I had a classmate when we were students at the University of Nairobi School of Journalism called Silva Velbarava. And one story we've always said, I wish that guy came to work for Hansard. Okay? Yes. Uh, he passed on, unfortunately, some years ago. So Silva Velbarava used to love bombastic, very huge vocabularies. So he would write like this. If let's say he wanted to say the University of Nairobi has come up with a method to stop students from taking it to court. Something like the University of Nairobi has mooted a stratagem to circumvent a legalese pandemonium. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Uh, rather than say the University of Nairobi has come up with a method to stop students. The University of Nairobi has mooted a stratagem to circumvent the legalist pandemonium. There are parliamentarians who talk like that. Point of note, Moses, I don't know, there's a parliamentarian in Uganda. One time the guy made a statement, and we actually discussed that as a case study in some workshop. How I, I wish I could see, how did the Hansard record the bombast statement that he made? Because anybody who reads that will not understand. And that is why I'm saying, for example, a footnote to simplify what he's saying would become important. That is something also for you to, to consider. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, let me end by telling you another true story on, on how, you know, and just before I say that, I like to mention that by the way, most of them are not a good job because he has addressed what we call, we summarize, we call them the five W's and the H of publishing and communication. What do you publish? Where do you publish? Why do you publish? When do you publish? Okay? How do you publish? Maybe you can add, so what? What is going to be the impact of what you publish? And the so what will be answered by all these values I'm trying to emphasize here. So, the story, lastly, just because when something is put in public domain, it remains there for historical references throughout the ages. I'd like to mention this, gentlemen, one of Kenya's most pioneer academics, Professor Bethel Logot. He was a mathematician. He wasn't an historian, by the way. He was a mathematician. He went to the University of St. Andrews to study master's and PhD in mathematics. But when he got there, when he saw the publications, how the publications had distorted African history, he decided to become an historian. On the day he arrived before a panel of examiners of white racist sportsmen to defend his PhD thesis, there was a problem in his PhD thesis. It had no literature review. It had no literature review. So there was a crisis meeting before his defense would begin. And he told them, the subject I have researched on does not have any written record. I have gathered all my data based entirely on oral testimony. They told him to get out and the anonymous decided that we don't need to examine this guy. This guy is too brilliant because he came up with a groundbreaking methodology that this guy had never thought about. All right? Now, why am I telling you this? The moment something is on public record, it is there for the histories to follow. So, a true story. Uh, Mr. Wanyoka, I think I told you this story when we met last time. We all know that the African countries, with the exception of Liberia and Ethiopia, were colonized by the Brits 
and the French and the Spaniards and the Portuguese at one point. You remember that? The method colonialists used to effect conquest was number one, using the church. I am a Catholic myself, but I acknowledge the use of the church in the conquest of colonies. So they would send missionaries who would come and learn the local language, teach you the white man's way of life, make you, and teach you things like, happy are those who are poor because so that when they come and take away all your land, you're supposed to be happy anyway. Okay? And once they thought the ground was fertile, they would now send word home and then the red coats would arrive to conquer the land and start to subdue you. So in one country in Africa, Matabele land, present day Zimbabwe, when the Brits arrived, the king was a guy called Lobengula. Lobengula, son of Zilikazi. And the first person to arrive, I am finishing Odongo. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Yes. The first person to arrive was a guy by the name of J.S. Moffat. He learned the local language. He converted the king to Christianity. And then when he thought the time was right, he sent word home. The first official action that the British government took to conquer Matabele was that Queen Victoria then of England sent Lubingua a telegram. For those of you who are very young, you might not know what a telegram is. It's some kind of official way of sending messages. Okay? The telegram has just one statement. Your Majesty, if you accept British occupation, I am going to be your friend. Lubingua did not understand the English, so J.S. Moffat read the telegram and interpreted it to Lubingua. Lobengula understood the message to mean if you accept British occupation, I am going to be your girlfriend. <laughs> and Lobengula told himself, the Queen of England is going to be my girlfriend. You can have the land. <laughs> and he signed a treaty, the Moffat Treaty of 1895, in which he said, I quote, I, Lobengula, King of the Dembele, give you the British complete mining, occupational, and territorial rights in my kingdom, and do all as you wish is necessary in Matabele land. And when he realized his mistake, when the Red Coats arrived, when the Red Coats arrived and took all the land, he made another very historic quote, which is where I end. He said, the chameleon advances very slowly, putting forward one leg and then the other, until it finally swallows the fly. We are the fly, you are the chameleon. Moses, and the guys who talked before me, I heard you guys talk about translation. The day somebody translates very intricate, important things in the Hansard to a stakeholder who understands it to mean I'm going to be your girlfriend, you will be the fly and your bosses will be the chameleon. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Okay. <laughs> Ah, Munasema kesho anza tena. Daktari umesikia? Kesho asubuhi. Kesho asubuhi tunaanza na wewe tena. But of course we will have a, a last bite after the panelists uh, are done and uh, I request Mr. Stephen Mutungi uh, Samburu County Turkana County Kindly join us uh, at the podium. Or this is what they call the dais. Is it podium or dais? In British or in American? <laughs> that is uh, Turkana. Nairobi County. Uh, Samburu County. Nakuru is supposed to join us. Where is Mr. Lutol? Mr. Lutol. I, I, I just needed to have five people here. And, uh, and uh, I, I need to do some justice to, to my teacher. And in that regard, I will ask one of the students to join the panel. Stacy, kindly. Oh, well, not a student. Uh, college mate. Stacy kindly. 
And the reason I'm calling on Ms. Tracy is because she brings on a wealth of experience, having worked at the Parliament of Kenya and currently working at the East African Legislative Assembly. Do we have mics? Mics, is it Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm ready. I'm ready with the mic. Yeah, this is how we will proceed with the panel. Uh, by the way, do you say kids or children? <laughs> Whatever, depends on which English you use. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we will proceed in this manner. I will start with you. Your name, please? Mike. Kai. Ekai. I'll start with Ekai. Each panelist will have four minutes. So we'll do 20 minutes here. And uh, I'm asking the panelists to pick out of the discussion areas as per the program, basic nets, editorial considerations, common mistakes, publishing aesthetics, publishing monthlies and um, periodicals and publishing manuals, pick one or two and say something about it or respond to anything that was said by Moses or Dr. Tari. Mr. Ikai. My name is Kai Mariko from Ghana County. The point is for me is that I'm not a leader, I'm not a reporter, but I'm a leader. So I'll try to do as much as possible. Uh, whatever thing uh, we will be thinking about. Uh, the process of uh, publishing, just as our colleague uh, Moses uh, talked about, uh, it is also what happened in our assembly, and uh, it's with uh, the other reporters. Then it means to the reporters in public segments, the configuration to uh, report that is important to them. Then it goes to the first line minister, who are the people who will come out and try to speak. But in our assembly, we, we also, we, we have trained the, the, the reporter also to be editor. We edit from there, so that as the document moves on, it, it goes with uh, little mistakes up to the, the final person who is the, the editor for publishing. And the publication has been in ways that we say, uh, but um, uh, that process, uh, I think it's a point with this consistency that we need to test on. The grammatical errors, if there are some that we need the, the reporters and the half-line uh, editors. Uh, and then now it is, it is ready for uh, exporting into the development of the assembly. Uh, the publication in our, in our assembly is done. Special, yeah, one of the items Okay, there are those daily for the people that come, those that are the uh, But uh, the garbage, the, 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 the books that we publish, we publish uh, on a yearly basis. But uh, allow me to share some of the values that my editor was able to give me before I, I, I try to uh, do some things that uh, need to be very. And she said that uh, they, they also experience feelings in terms of submissions of reports. And sometimes this delays uh, the whole publication of the, of the report because some, some reporters are slower or maybe are not uh, uh, adept in, in doing their, their work. Uh, another one was the issue of references and indexes. 
זה דווקא האורות המחוצות של המשנה, דנות ודנות 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 Uh, it's one thing that I wanted to uh, talk on what most of you have said about the issue of point growth. And we also experience the but what we do in our thinking is that uh, we, we need to just go back to the master recorder, look at uh, the, we go up to the, the, the master recorder to change. Because we, we, we record, you can see from the record, one, two, three, and the other one, we need to go back there and check on the quality. If it's still in the audio, then we, we have another software and object. We try to, to do the, the amplification of the, of the audio to make sure that we have captured the audio and master audio for. I think for me, uh, after that, uh, then I would want to say this, but I would want to check this CP because this is an office for some of us. Uh, we've learned a lot and uh, we want to thank uh, the app that uh, as we move to modernize this and to make it uh, uh, an application, a professional body, because there are so many professional bodies. And a professional body develops all these that goes with other things. They guide, they give the guidelines. If we only wait for other people to do it for us, then I think we are in the right end. The commission wants to do it. Now, having worked in private for eight years, I am excited to do what we presented in the next two And what I wanted to say as we think by <laughs> and what I wanted to say also as we think by the Taoraka, but this is now right. Yeah, <laughs> 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 In the past cycle, we need to start from February and all the ministries of the day they are enjoyed the environment. And what that process is doing, how the commission know what has been appropriated to them, it is through our report. And it is very clear that we make that some of the ministries that is mentioned as suspended out, not as suspended out, but as suspended out.
Is it? I
And that goes across board in trying to get a little bit of a good work of the not to pass that gap of the day to practice it. So we look at your bag and we give them a pair of things and you have to stay at those things yourself. You can't be back up on your part of the bag. You have to do it at the airport. So if other organizations are trying to come on with everything around the field, then start to be talking to them and talk about uh, harmonizing our hands so that we are all probably on the same page when it comes to the way we do our training, the way we do our, our, our reports and all that. So I think I'm there. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, Stacy, Makoha, Mutungi, and uh, Ekai. Uh, I want to have floor interventions. Probably you could pick three. And then we have uh, uh, what they call uh, summations from the presenters and the panelists a minute each. And as we do that, we, are, we will be moving to the next session. And I request the following persons to be ready. And we will be, it will be a short session because we're just sharing experiences. I think three minutes will be enough for each person. Parliament of Ghana, I hear they, they, they are at the airport. I hope they arrive. Parliament of Rwanda, I don't know whether they cross the border. Iala is around. Parliament of Tanzania, whoever is representing them. Parliament of Uganda, Pokot. Is Pokot still around? Yeah, yeah, Pokot is around. Uh, like Kipia, Baringo, Lamu, National Land Commission, and by my authority, Wajia County. Uh, any interventions from the floor? And uh, if you have an intervention from the floor, we request that you come to the podium because uh, miraculously, the systems have failed to move on the floor. They only work from this side. So if you have an intervention kindly, Anyone, kindly come forth. Anybody else? Yeah, so that's fine. So we'll have one, then we'll do uh, join us. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is Alan Ochen. I'm the Senior Publications Officer at the Parliament of Uganda. <coughs> uh, the request has been to add on to something, maybe by the panelists and then the speakers before. However, I would like to introduce something that is new but related. Uh, that regards the process of actually publishing the answered. Uh, when the answered leaves the hands of the editor, the question is, where does it go? And that is where I come in for packaging. <clears throat> the answered is like, like food. Um, there is a person who goes to the market, which are the, the reporters, uh, they are the chefs, and the cooks, and then there are the servers and the waiters. I would like to introduce you to the part of the waiting and the serving. In our history, there's been a bit of the use of page maker or the Adobe page maker, which is now defunct. That presents to us the Parliament of Uganda, problem number one, compatibility. How far do you see in publishing your documents in the next 10? for 20 years. Will it be relevant to new and upcoming technologies? Uh, two, the integration of AI. I've still insisted that AI should be a concern to anyone who is doing publishing or generally uh, circumventing in their career. What I'm saying AI is a cause for concern is my point number two, dwells on the convenience is 
and even what I would like to refer to as co-piloting when it comes to the use of AI. One year ago, the Adobe suit that we use, that is Adobe InDesign, had traits of artificial intelligence. It just had traits of artificial intelligence. As of six months ago, there are lots of AI tools that were introduced in Adobe InDesign and Adobe Creative Suite as a whole. For example, I'll give you one. In Adobe Premiere, I'd like to use this example. If I stood here uh, and I made a presentation, and then somehow realized that this presentation, I should have made it when I had a necktie. Six months ago, you could not include a necktie in a video. Now you can do, you can include a necktie in a video. That brings us to the third and probably the last point I would like to, to raise. The issue of authenticity of the documents that we publish. I can add a necktie when I am standing here and it's going to look authentic. Anyone can insert any information into any document and it is going to look and sound authentic, especially when you're trusted as an authority to publish such a document. And that is also a problem that we are now facing. Uh, two days ago, so many Kenyans and Nigerians actually believed that the first daughter of Uganda had been appointed as the governor of what? Of the country. But it wasn't right. She's a pastor. She has no qualification whatsoever to do with finance. But because the blogs and the uh, accounts that published that information made it sound relevant, it turned out that it was relevant. So much of the documentations that we deal with when it comes to uh, publishing um, the Hansard are also turning points for us that, that are constantly changing. Our biggest, problem, our biggest problem as creatives is that governments are rigid. For instance, if you are to look at the Hansard of Kenya, it probably has the National Assembly on the back and some text. It is the least appealing document that anyone would want to read. If you look at that of Tanzania, it is the same. If you look at that of Uganda, it is the same. But now there are third party bodies that are coming up and trying to incorporate a bit of visual design into documents, into side documents, and making them also look appealing. And I think that is a point that we also need to, uh, that we need to look at. So um, I think as publishers, we also need to work hand in hand with, uh, with editors of this answer, because uh, at the end of the day, what an editor has missed, which may also be just a common mistake. For instance, uh, an editor from one side of Turkana is dealing with a name that uh, someone from the other side of Kenya could have easily caught and they missed it. So in our, in our entirety, we also need to equip ourselves with what? With editing skills as publishers of the hard side. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much. I think we are coming to the end of uh, this session. Uh, I want to give uh, the panelists a minute each to say anything they wish to say. You might even choose to pray. Or, or say thank you. And then I will come to uh, Moses to have the last, um, his last bite. And then Dr. Tari will wrap up and we close. Okay. Just one. Okay, come. But you have a minute plus 43 seconds. Kindly. Yes, uh, thank you. Mine is actually not a question. It's just something that has just crossed my mind uh, as you are winding up. Eh? We are talking about publishing, and we are in this century. Is it the 21st or we are going to the 22nd? So we are talking about uh, environmental awareness, uh, taking care of the environment, moving away from cutting trees and uh, painting, the actual publishing in hard copy. So are we still going as answered to continue doing the hard bound copy? Or are we now going to think of uh, now evolving uh, to, towards now e-publishing only, uh, as opposed to now the hard copy publishing, which takes time? 
you have to wait for publisher to do what before you know it people have lost interest so that's just something i wish we should uh, think about as we move forward in this topic thank you ah uh, thank you thank you uh, mr ikai please have your last bite Thank you so much once again and I'll say that my name is Kai Manko from Kai Kauti. And when I'm speaking, I want to observe that um, the international that we call Gendera Master Plan and the info is kind of going the info as well as the publishing. But I think uh, this, this, this sitting, this plan needs to uh, come up with a guide. That will be followed and to standardize it. Otherwise, we seem to be following the same direction we do with some missing here and there. But I think as a standard way of doing it, should be there and I think that we are much, uh, should have involved uh, uh, in the members, so that is the uh, petition, because for the process to be accepted. Uh, there is a question I wanted to. That's an observation which I wanted to ask to the, the floor. The fact that uh, uh, members are taking audios and taking maybe videos of, of their contribution to the chamber, how do you, how do we, how do we, how do we do that? Because once it gets out, then it is called manipulation. So this error of error. What, what do you think about that? I don't know. I just put it. Before you, because the uh, future problems of air will be that uh, people will have contributed something, they will have gone outside there, they will have manipulated, they will have gone to which is different. How do you go about it? Uh, again, members seem to be very ignorant about uh, the whole importance of the answer itself. How do we, as answer, be able to educate the members of the importance because if they know the importance and uh, the value, the answer, they, they will be able to support it financially, politically, they will be able to support them in my uh, contribution. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. This is my first interview in what Alan is. Alan from the first team from Uganda. I hope you are going to. If you have done something, in that we will be taking another disappointment for the account of training. You need to share with your colleagues. In that way, we are not an enough of work. So, collaboration is the most important thing. And then for me, as a, as a public government for many years, I hope that we are going to inspire publishing the answer. I think that we have to give a lot of potential and I don't think that we have to give a lot of potential for the project. And I think again the reality of and out of that, you can see a proposition to this one, and I was told on the same day, for me, this is the cost of this year, and we will see the result of this uh, interaction. And I am guided in the country, 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 in the
Uh, asante sana uh, Moses uh, please come and uh, tell us whether you've uh, changed some ideas or you've picked anything new uh, 
Uh, thank you. It was great listening to Dr. Ranga Jens. Um, his insightful comments. Um, if, if I was just to say one or two about uh, the need for us to be very, very mindful about our language and uh, for anyone who publishes, uh, you owe it, it's a duty to you and to the, um, you owe it as a duty to the people you reach out to, to offer them information that is uh, useful, but also responsible. However, you find the Hansard operating within a, a defined uh, set uh, with guidelines also uh, determining how we should uh, operate. Um, when we talk of issues of responsibility, not to offend uh, another member, say if a member makes whatever remarks you make, and probably the use of euphemisms if um, a member uses a very strong word which ordinarily you would not want to put in paper because that stays for posterity. The challenge that we have here is that in the house, or if I should just talk about the forms that we find the answer, the answer exists in various forms. You have the transcript, but you also have the audio. You also have the video. That is if it is not edited. Yeah? So those are the three forms. But you also have during this sitting, you have the media in there. And sometimes the media goes with the blood. They are happy to run with uh, that very strong form of address that has been used on another member. And what about the speaker who is the custodian of the rules? If the speaker does not find it within him to, to, to tell the member to withdraw that word, he can still exercise his prerogative to to direct that the, the, the member's contribution be expunged. And when that is done, definitely it won't exist. So I, uh, it becomes complicated for the, um, the, the, the Hansard reporter or editor for that matter, to take it upon himself to maybe be the assistant speaker to, to enforce this uh, decorum. But uh, these are things that we take note, uh, it's food for thought. I like the idea of uh, explanatory notes, the footnotes. How do you handle that with uh, the video handset? Because uh, that would have gone. You cannot add notes. The only thing you can do after you publish it is probably to get back to it and um, cut out, especially where the speaker has directed something be expanded. You can cut out that segment and do that. But even then, the transcript the Hansard transcript should mirror what you have telecast. Yeah? There should not be a big divergence between what is on video and what is on the transcript. And like I was telling you earlier, I was a subject of that interrogation when I was asked to explain how come that in the video, the speaker says, uh, this member is sent for disciplinary. And in my text, I added the word action, sent to disciplinary action. Nothing much changed, but someone was trying to build a big issue out of that. So um, I would like to thank you again for listening and to thank Dr. Oranga for your very insightful contributions. Thank you. And um, just a quick one. I wanted to respond to a question that was posed about uh, a scenario where a member takes his audios or uh, video contributions. And then later on, the, they do a very great job of it and uh, infuse it with words that were not said. And you cannot tell whether that was either the case. It's only the person who listened in in the house who can tell a uh, fact from fiction. Uh, the issue of this is that uh, we have official channels. When, and this has been happening especially with Twitter uh, or Facebook for that matter. And you've seen... Uh, posts where the same account will write their fake. Now, what about for audio? We have official channels that we post uh, house settings. And should anyone indeed want to cross check, all they need to do is to log on to the Senate uh, YouTube channel or the County Assembly channel, whichever it is, and they can find the official record in there, the full length of the video, and they can verify that uh, from fiction. But we cannot do much in uh, 
running after some of that because you cannot, uh, of course, unless the member comes back and seeks uh, the official record, it's easy to avail that and to uh, point them to the, uh, the official Hansard channel where that information is. Thank you. Uh, Santa Sana Moses, Doctor, you want to give us the last story? <laughs> All right, thank you. I'll stick to two issues because, in the interest of time, I'll begin with what uh, my doctoral students have uh, imagined raised about hard copy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to think very carefully about this issue as we think about. There's a tendency amongst us nowadays that just because something is new, it is the best. Or just because something, there's, there's a new innovation, it is a better replacement. Uh, I think those of us who scrutinize things very carefully, it's still within information management. We've seen that is not always the case. All right? Just because now we can access information on soft copy does not mean it necessarily accords something better than if it is in hard copy. Uh, I'd imagine I have to tell you, the debate about environmental conservation, the devices you need to put information on soft copy portend serious environmental problems than paper because you have to deal with plastics and the environmental impact it has. You have to deal with the coal term and its mining in the DRT. So it's a, it's a Pandora's box you don't want to get into. In any case, in developed economies nowadays, we don't cut down trees to make paper. We use alternative metals, raw materials to make paper. We use grass to make paper. We use napier grass to make paper. So you don't have to be destroying the environment to make paper. But that's a story for another day. But more importantly, there's one thing I want to tell you. In the 1920s, that's when the radio came and it took the world by storm. In the 1950s, something else happened. The TV came. And the thinking was the same thinking you are presenting, that now that a device that gave you both sound and pictures are come, did you still need the device that gave you only sound? And there was this prediction about the way radio would die and so on and so forth. Now, 80 years later, has the radio died? In fact, it is more popular, it is more accessible than TV, even in the developed world. So we us be very careful saying, because now we can access the of soft copy, books are going to die, I don't know when books will die, if they will ever die. But I know that they serve as printed information on hard copy serves a certain value addition that you cannot find in accessing it on soft copy. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, in strict communication, professional communication, I see nowadays I have students who come to class and they want to take, you know, as I'm lecturing, they want to take, they're not using a mobile phone. I usually chase them out of my class, tell them mobile phones are not allowed in class by the rules of the University of Nairobi, all right? That is our rule. We may be conservative, but we have a reason. Why? Because there are many destructive tendencies that come into it as we're trying to concentrate. So that's something that is for you to, to consider. My own view would be that innovations should simply add to the wealth of alternatives, what we call the multimedia approach, that less information, the way we store it, the way we access it, be available in multiple forms, and let each human being choose the form that is most convenient to him or her. That could be my... Okay. They believe that, oh, let's discard this because it's old school. I don't roll like that, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay? The second is about aesthetics. Okay? Um, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when I walked into this meeting of yours, I met one of my students as I was walking here. That is on day one. And when I got to that table, I was given something like this. You all have this, eh? And uh, then I was told, Mwalimu, write down your name and then hang it on you. So I wrote my name and I, and I hung it on me. Okay. I'm just asking, but the, 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 I'm not ridiculing you. It's just food for thought. Do you consider this aesthetical? Uh, the beauty, you know, it, it, the way you guys have done it, it doesn't look really very nice. Eh? Yeah, maybe you need to, yes. Uh, what are aesthetics? Aesthetics are things that enhance attraction and pleasantness to the eyes. Don't you agree? Yes. And so somebody said, uh, sis, I think it was you, that if I'm interested in somebody, in a lady, I'll go for one who 
will blow my mind away. You know what I mean? Not for one who will give me nightmares. You get the point. So, if I want to enhance aesthetics in a handsome document, the question you're asking yourself, what are the things we can do to make the information that you pack it there more attractive, more appealing? So that as I read it, I not only understand and appreciate, but I also enjoy doing it. The way you paragraph, very important. The way you space, very important. There are even infographics specific. I heard somebody talk about, you know, Adobe InDesign and so on. There are infographics, infographics specifically to enhance the aesthetic value of a document. And those are things we ought to consider. So that you don't just think that's gray matter, gray matter, gray matter, gray matter, nothing else, okay? Yeah, lastly, and, um, something that was mentioned about the necktie. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about Hansard YouTube reports. But in, I had somebody say about, you know, we need to borrow from journalistic traditions. In journalistic practice, there are requirements now that even in live broadcast shows, let's say there's a debate going on in Jeff Kuinange Live, all broadcast enterprises are required to have something called delayed transmission signal. So what they do, you, they activate it every time there's a live broadcast. So what happens? What you are watching or what you're receiving comes to you five minutes after the actual. You understand? The reason for that is that should there be anything that is blasphemous, uh, libel, you know, defamatory, you know, it can be er erased before it reaches whatever. Maybe that is something you ought to consider. I don't know. But because you guys are saying that the things you just can't bother him or whatever, that one is up to you. Lastly, the question about Dr. Who. You said Dr. Odalo. There's something in Kenya we call popular wisdom. And my sad bit is that Parliament has been a victim of that. It's a mistake that we made so many times until it is socially accepted as correct. So in Kenya, we do not take the titles of people seriously. So somebody you begin, there's a colleague of mine, I won't mention his name because he's my senior, and he's retiring this year anyway, we should give our seniors. Um, the guy taught me, and then now he's my colleague, and he's several steps beneath me, even in rank. He's never done a PhD, but he's very popular in the media. He talks well, he's a good talker. He comments on political issues and current affairs. Every media house calls him professor. All right? So because of that, it has come to be accepted, at least in social circles, as correct. I can date a cow if that baby became an MP. After he retires, you guys will be calling him professor. In fact, you'll be recording him in the hands as professor, but he's not. So that is popular wisdom. We should not let popular wisdom lead the way of what the right thing that should do. I'll give you an example, and this is where I end. In English, spoken English, the very first job I did in my life, I was a teacher of English. A lady who is yet to experience the intimacy of a man is called a virgin. All right, a man who is yet to experience the intimacy of a woman. This is a Kenyan popular wisdom thing. You also call him a virgin, isn't it? Please never say that. That is extremely incorrect. A man can't be the masculine version for that description is not virgin. It is actually who knows a saint. Okay. <laughs> I'm not joking. I don't joke, by the way. Yes. But because in popular wisdom, we've been used to saying virgin. So that is what we say. Are you getting the point? But again, it comes to the question of pragmatics and semantics. What we call pragmatics and semantics. Okay? But semantics deal with the actual meanings of concepts and words. But pragmatics deal with the concepts. So... In the Kenyan context or in spoken English context, the concept of virgin is what people understand. So if you told them a saying, they might not even understand what you're talking about. Okay? But if you went to a place where serious English speakers, where educated mortals like Professor Duri here, and you say virgin to a man, you could be saying something else that you don't want to know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud of our session because at least all participants have exercised what I was talking about, communicative competence, keeping time. Is that another okay? Yeah, so please, uh, I will request that you clap for us in a special way, not like this. These guys have been dropping very weekly since this conference began anyway. So let me show you our, okay? 
I want to show you a new way of clapping involving two characters, one called Otis and one called Kitalo. So when I say Otis, you simply do that. Let's try that. Otis, Otis. And when I say Kitalo, you snap. You do that. So Kitalo. Okay. So Otis, Otis, Kitalo, Kitalo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It looks like that night just to be the the what do you call it? The appreciation you would have had at the end, right? Uh, but in the in the in the parliamentary tradition, I would ask that we do three what? Three what? One, two, three, parliamentary tradition, kindly. For the participants, for the panelists and the presenters. One, two, go. Thank you very much. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Dr. Tai. And we end that session by asking the question Dr. Tai asked us. So what? Parliament of Ghana, as Parliament of Ghana is coming to share experiences, kindly rise up, let's rise up, let's rise up, let's do a, a one minute uh, job. Uh, Yala representative, kindly join, join the podium, please. We save on time. Parliament of Tanzania, representative, do whatever you want to do to, to refresh yourself. But within the room, kindly. Pokot, Pokot, please. Laikipia, Baringo, Lamu, National Land Commission, and Ibrahim from Narisa. I think in the next 15 minutes, we will be done with this session. Yes. Yeah. This is Karibu. Uh, Tanzania is already here. Uh, where's Uganda? Uganda is done. Okay. Pokot. Uh, let's let's be seated now. Let's be seated. Pokot, Lamu, I can see Lamu arriving. If you can play the next person, I can teach you again. It's okay. Baringo, Baringo, Pokot. So Pokot is here. Lamu is here. Tanzania is here. National Land Commission. Oh. Garissa. Garissa. Nikama me ame tembea kidogo. Uh, like like people was here. Karibu, karibu. And uh Baringo is here. Not yet. This is ah, okay. Baringo. I think Betty Logisoy can represent Baringo. Ako. <laughs> uh, Mombasa. Is Mombasa around? Where's Mombasa? County. County. Welcome, please, kindly. Kindly. You, you know? Um, we would like to request for a slot tomorrow with mm -hmm. something we wanted to share with the rest of the members. That's okay. Too. But can you say something now? Please. Please. Okay. 
I think that, that that's representative enough. Yeah. And at least uh, all these uh, county assemblies and uh, National Land Commission. The mic is there. Ah, on Tanzania. Yeah, the regional representatives. Uh, I want to give you each. Uh, I request that we do three minutes so that we save on time. Or is that injustice enough? Is it injustice enough? Two minutes, five minutes, three, three minutes. Yeah, three minutes each. This is like keep here. Yeah? Oh, good. Three minutes each. And uh, the, 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 the session is sharing experiences. It is as open as, as, as any book. Say anything you want to say about your county or your department or your or this place or these people or the panel. Say whatever you want to tell us. Whatever experience you think is shareable, please, kindly. I'll start with uh, Laikipia. Let's go. Uh, good evening, colleagues. Uh, my name is Nicholas Kilani from uh, Lake Ipia County Assembly. I'm the deputy editor. Uh, based on my, ex uh, my experience, I, I know most of you have seen it and, uh, recently in the social media on the issue of uh, uh, bridge of protocol and uh, the fighting of the assembly, whereby uh, uh, there is an issue of miscommunication, uh, whereby the minority leader was being ousted by the uh, the party, minority party, that was uh, ODM. So the issue was, uh, he didn't want the communication to be done by the speaker, but the speaker did it anyway. He didn't know how to uh, address it at the party level. So it resulted in a, so it also brought about a backlash uh, when it came to staff, because now the people who are being targeted uh, were answered. It was a big issue. I think part of the video you guys didn't see, but it's in uh, the social media in YouTube. Because some of the uh, microphones were damaged, uh, we had issues with the recording and all that. Uh, and another thing, it took a twist because now, at the end of it, uh, the following day, the speaker did the communication and there was still uh, commotion and focus. And uh, he did the communication, uh, he read the communication from the minority party and uh, adjourned the house. So when they were shouting and uh, fighting with the sergeant at arms, because uh, I, I have never understood why when the strikers they always go after the miss. So uh, when that happened, they were calling me and saying, hey, you're you keeping me here, call me Kwanza. I'm here, I'm wishing you see this home. I have not even to know that. Everything that is read, it is captured and we transcribe as it is. They didn't even know it was being read, it was read and it uh, was already affected. So uh, they were even saying that we turned off the microphones for them. Uh, they wanted to pause because uh, when the speaker is reading as per parliamentary tradition, everybody has to sit down. So what we did was to shut down the mics of every other member and uh, let that one of the speaker uh, be heard as uh, per the communication and as per the standing order. So uh, it was quite an experience and uh, uh, it's good. Because now it showed us the essence of our professionalism and us being uh, committed to our work. Because not many people understand the kind of work we're doing. But uh, we hope by the inception of the Hansard Association, some of these issues will be addressed. Thank you. My name is Regina from the Parliament of Tanzania. I will try to share my experience. And we are consider most of the part where I was asked by you. First of all, uh, in the Parliament of Tanzania, we have seven departments, six units, three private offices, and one, in one office of the leader of the position. Answer unit is one of the among the units and is responsible for production of answered units, answered to the answered. Also, it is responsible for flashing of other development from other units and departments. 
let us see now the structure of the unit. Uh, Hansard unit is headed by the director, by, by director of the Hansard, who supervises all the officers in the unit. Officers are placed with different roles. We have people who are recording, who are transcribing, who are printing and editing. Uh, in recording and transcribing, we have we have lots of people, staff of 21, 21 staffs. We have five editors, five printers, and we have three staffs who are secretaries and who are Let us see the staff specialization. As a unit, we have, uh, I mean, as a unit is equipped with staff for variety specialization from a great diversity to make a good team. That means we have lawyers, we have linguistics, we have teachers, we have philosophers, we have political scientists, printers, as well as secretaries. This diversity allows cross consultation when facing any challenge. For example, confirm to a certain type when they have done an analog sheria and also mutatis mutandis. So the secretaries cannot understand what is mutatis mutandis. So you have to consult the lawyer. Uh, also, let us go move the production process. Answer the is prepared as per order 169, order 1, 2 and 3 of standing order. Uh, also, answer process, as we all know, begin with recording. So the recorded audio, when passes the transcribers, transcribers will get, we used to get two texts per day, which amount of 20 minutes. So it depends on the shape of the day. So you will find that per day one can get three minutes, I mean, the minutes or three texts things like that. Also, the transcriber must also make sure that he have, he have, the, he have made the first draft in editing before passing the work to the editors. Thereafter, the transcriber will pass the work to the editors, whereby editors will do their work thoroughly. Thereafter, the work will pass over to the chief editor for proofreading. Chief editor also will make his work, will make his job, will proofread it thereafter. You, if Kamaki is a key, a key supply and a yokazi, a technical printing section whereby will they print few copies due to the paperless police, they may produce 50 or 20 depending with the situation. Also, the chief editor is the one who will allow or give, give the permission the answer to be uploaded to the website. Let us see the committee meetings. As the answer, we are responsible to to record and produce the answer of four committees. That means we have budget committee, public investment committee, that is PIC. We have local authority account committee, that is LAC. We have uh, public account committee, that is PIC. So the mode we use in recording this committee, we use IC recorder and the Stardiva, that is computer system. And we, in this committee, they used to record two people from outside from the institution, different institution, they used to come. So one is taking the names and the one and the other one is recording. So as to ensure that all the names in that they are set. Also, uh, our parliament offers a training and short courses. We have long training and short courses. Uh, short, long training, they used to go two people or more, depending on the budget. Also, the short courses. We used to go most of us, all of us, or half of us, depending on the budget. I think that is all about that. Thank you for listening. Okay, I'm Muhammad from Lam What are the experience in Lam County? First of all, now we have only 10 years. So we have 10 elected and 8 nominated. 
So in our department, first of all, we have three staff, one editor, two reporters plus reporter. So our, our reporters are going to do their recording and their transcription. So another thing is that they speak Islam dialect. People of Islam, they, they are all bilingual. So in terms of speaking Italian, sometimes we us as hunters and sometimes we took on a big challenge in terms of transcription and some of the ideas are not very good in Italian. So we have a big challenge in the real language. Another thing, there's sometimes no call and no question, but we don't want to analyze them or find them because maybe you can see a common statement strong and a common issue in the so, for a high for a king at the end of the day, you find a real proceeding for the government to end their accommodation. So, they can proceed with only three members plus in the challenge. Another thing, sometimes they say, and as a boy, I'm going to say, 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 I, I don't know if it is good afternoon or good evening. Yes, I am Clement Tabot from the uh, West Spokon County Assembly. First, I want to appreciate uh, the organizers of this event. Actually, we have been able to uh, share experiences and also learn a lot as a team from uh, Hansard. Uh, also, to appreciate the national and county, uh, national and uh, the Senate. Uh, assemblies or they match others as uh, counties. Actually, uh, I would fail to, to, to point out that. Uh, among the challenges we face as a uh, West Pocot County Assembly, uh, uh, first of all, we have like two reporters, we have, uh, I mean, uh, two body officers, three reporters. Uh, and then two uh, editors, assistant editor and uh, the, the editor himself. So first, uh, we've been experiencing uh, challenges whereby uh, we've been having frequent transfers of uh, uh, our staffs, hands and staffs. Uh, things there are done uh, locally where you just to wake up one of the mornings and you find one of your colleagues may be transferred to any other uh, office within the institution. So uh, we've been losing expertise because uh, uh, we are forced sometimes to, to source uh, other staff or even bring chance and for them to uh, get to learn the uh, the process uh, it usually it actually compromises the 48 hour uh, uh, <coughs> routine. Uh, secondly, I think this was talked over yesterday, and I saw it cutting across almost all assemblies, and this pertains equipment, thanks to the AI, uh, where we are being told it is a technology where it will assist maybe uh, sometimes we face uh, uh, difficulties in having better equipment or sometimes even we have less. Uh, so we believe AI may assist, although I don't know if it will apply much in our county assembly because uh, there we have a problem with uh, language connectivity. Uh, Swahili use or even English use is something of a 
uh, akuntan the bottom line is uh, bottom line is we appreciate it will help us uh, maybe move further uh, i don't know if it applies another point is i don't know if it applies to uh, other accounts uh, but i believe this has been something that in one way or the other it is affecting most of our hands and reporters specifically uh, and uh, to read as well. Uh, it is about headphones. I don't know if it is about quality, or I don't know if it is about. Uh, uh, but we have uh, uh, we have had most of our staffs being affected uh, health-wise by use of those headphones. I don't know if there is any other quality. I don't know if it is about quality or uh, uh, long use of these headphones. But uh, we have had two of our uh, reporters being affected, uh, having ear problems. Uh, thanks to, I think it was the National Assembly or Senate, they once told us uh, we should be using milk. Uh, I haven't uh, seen uh, people talking about it, but actually it is something, it is a concern. Uh, yeah. So that one has made us lose exercise within the in our office because developing such a problem, uh, a person is, uh, uh, is being uh, taken elsewhere for because of health purposes. Uh, another problem we are having is Hansard uh, being engaged in committees. Uh, we are having problems with drugs mostly because uh, I don't know if in these committees uh, members don't discuss anything, I, I don't really know, or I don't know how they, they usually handle their things, but usually they have been logging us out uh, in these things, in these committees. And uh, members have been toxified most of uh, the times, so they usually put uh, hands and officers aside. So I don't know how, but we've been striving hard to, uh, we have been trying to uh, educate them on the importance of uh, this uh, uh, recording of these uh, hands and co uh, meeting committees, house committees. But uh, that is part of some of the challenges we've been facing. So I don't think if I have uh, much to add other than to thank uh, thank you very much. So, I'm from the I'm from National Lands Commission. So, to begin with, thank you very much for the opportunity for the host, that is the National Assembly, and the rest for accommodating us. In fact, I think, uh, not I think, it's a fact, the uh, National Lands Commission is the only dependent duty that has an effective, not really effective, but has a handsome team. But, uh, okay, disclaimer, without prejudice, disclaimer, uh, whatever I'm going to talk about, uh, so, so LLC only independent commission. So, but in a judiciary, judiciary don't know processing issue but there is also IBC. IBC also will become money. They, they started, in fact, with buying the equipment. Then, in the process of uh, hands and answers, I don't know process in future. So, anyway, I'm not sick of IBC, because I call NLC. Uh, so, uh, when you come to NLC, uh, challenges that we face 
Uh, challenges ni zile zile. Starting with equipments. We are suffering. Hatuna equipments. I think, I don't know, the reason to the Jaribu, to the Ghana, to Japan. We are reducing, for recording purposes, we only have the handheld recorders. Even the tablet, you can imagine. And uh, most of our recordings, our work mostly is not in Kwa Kijiji, machinani We go to ground panel to Napakana on Anchi. So you can imagine you have a recorder in your house to share kwa whole camera. So moja kiongea uku. Now, without a public address system, it becomes hard for you to control whoever is speaking. Because moja tongei pande, you rush the recorder to him, mungina tongei le pande mungina. And you need to record both people. So challenge iko when it comes to equipments, so there is a time also we had a proposal to National Assembly and Senate about uh, could you aspect the equipments using it for I don't know memory if it shall happen until today we are still waiting. So apart from that, what 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 helps us is uh, when we come to most the virtual meetings, conferences. That one is usually done via WebEx. So it's like just like Zoom. Those who have interacted with WebEx become a Zoom. So you just log in. When uh, everybody is present, you have confirmed that either some of the participants and everyone else, you just press button, record. So everything will go on until uh, when the conference is over, you just uh, need to stop and the recording will be saved via cloud. So you just log in again, go to the cloud, you have your audio. From there, you just start transcribing. So that is the challenge that we have, equipments. Then uh, appreciation. We are not, as I said, it's not, it's not appreciated so far when it comes to the condition. Their int interests, to the user departments only comes in when there is something of urgency. That's when they rush to you and ask you, I need the Hansard or a report for project A, B, C, D that was done a while back. So even when uh, those of you who sit in committees, in the lands committee, I think, uh, again, this is a disclaimer. <laughs> you may have witnessed those uh, the management while they'll see when they come for to be grilled in parliament or for those committee sessions. You can see how they fumble. Swally, they cannot answer anyway. But uh, it's because if they had the answered reports, you see how straight they would be. But because of that breakdown, you find that. Uh, the response is usually, uh, we shall come back after two weeks with a response. Why? Good answer. So they never rely on any past, which is a past as we continue. So again, uh, staffing. When we come to staffing, we are understaffed. We are only three members. I think uh, the rest of the world are all the So we are only three members. So the number three, we are the everything. We are the recorders, audio recorders, we are the transcribers, we are the editors, we are the transcribers, we are the publishers of the reports. So, this is multipurpose, you can imagine. And then, this is where it now gets interesting. While in Parliament, I think uh, we have compared notes, not to be honest, at least for a Hansard, for a transcriber from the parliament, the least, not the least, maximum minutes that can be segmented a person in that 20 minutes at most. Is it? How many? 20. 120 minutes. 
when there is impeachment for 20 minutes wow it's a lot lakini bado yetu ni mingi zaidi because as we speak now we have around uh, 60 hours of recordings that is to be done by the three of us the three officers so can imagine if you were to to kiamulie hiyo kazi clear the backlog kila mtu atagana 20 hours 20 hours no equipment in fact even desktop tuko na desktop moja peke yake that is what we use so uh, usually unapata we work in shifts so unakuja asubuhi unakaa hadi saa saa tano mwingine achukulia kutoka saa tano hadi saa nane mwingine saa nane hadi saa siku inaisha hivyo so you can imagine now tumeamua we clear the backlog 60 hours divided by 3 kila mtu 20 hours and still kazi bado inakuja because these hearings they are continuous to inaisha like uh, this week next week tutakuwa mm-hmm. na a session ya malini so from that session tutapata recordings will come uh, recordings itakuwa kama around 25 hours so to pull up kwa ile 16 minutes that is 5 hours because okay session zetu zinakuanga hizo za kwenda mashinani you go you for a whole week today you meet a different group here tomorrow kule tomorrow kule so it's a daily recording then sasa mnarudi kwa ofisi na we start to transcribe that's how challenging it is to us anyway tutatoboa tu amini so that is it those are the challenges that we face watume ni mingi but ni zile zile tu zenye pia tumesikia uko mashinani na bado kwa parliament so maybe in, a, in another area we want to touch on is on ai ai think up on your to libati kidogo because of uh, we are tech 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 to developers so maybe i cannot share with you that one now because it will take time probably nikitoa rusa with the organizers kesho maybe you can come early then i do a demo for you on how we do the transcription and at least in that idea fanya kazi haraka but again it is for english only ukijaribu na kiswahili utauma nje because kiswahili hata typing you will find it type word ya kiswahili you underline everything red 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 but with the ai that we use although but it's not approved ya tumetafuta tu konje at least inatusaidia kufanya kazi so maybe can end there then uh, probably kama kutakuwa na interest tomorrow early in the morning before the presentation begins we can just do a demo for you sawa okay thank you very much Good evening. My name is Salma Mamu, director of the Scout Assembly of Lunga. Um I want first to appreciate the Hansara Association of Kenya Parliament uh, for the invite. Um I'm here with four of my colleagues from the directorate of Hansard Services. Uh, so I want to take this opportunity to also thank the leadership of the Scout Assembly of Mombasa for the goodwill to enable us uh, be here to join our colleagues in this in these conversations uh, first uh, let me start uh, with the staffing in terms of staffing we are 12 officers uh, we have uh, the director of transport services the deputy director and reporters we have a sign language interpreter and our audio technician mr sad um Uh, in, uh, uh, in our answered um, work we have four sittings every week uh, we uh, amended our standing orders so we have our sittings on tuesday morning and afternoon and wednesday morning and afternoon um, um, 
let me also mention something about uh, uh, the relationship with other departments. We enjoy a good relationship with other departments. Uh, but uh, even under this, I uh, can also mention something on the, our earlier topic on the common mistakes that we find in publishing. Uh, sometimes the mistakes or the errors um, come about because uh, there are errors from the documents that are before the house. Sometimes uh, the timings, um, you can find maybe uh, the document, the, maybe the order paper stating that the sitting uh, was held um, at uh, 10 p.m., but this is as a result of copy and paste. So as editors, I think we should be vigilant even as we consume the documents that are tabled in the house, because sometimes there are minor mistakes, sometimes the sitting number. So really, before you you publish, you have to be careful and uh, counter check on the dates and timings so that uh, the documents that are uploaded in our website are, are, are not, uh, uh, do not have mistakes. Also, in terms of uh, in terms of the challenges that we face at the counter sector of Mombasa, um, we have uh, challenges of uh, equipment. Uh, we are still uh, rely on uh, manual ways of uh, recording, but uh, the counter assembly is currently in the process of procuring a modern hazard uh, um, processing uh, management uh, system. So soon uh, we'll be able to join our peers of our embraced uh, technology. So this means we are yet to go paperless, but um, uh, we do what we can in terms of uh, delivering our product. Uh, I also want to mention that we have seen a lot of appreciation of Hansard work. If I compare um, what, if I compare the way Hansard work was um, appreciated when we were starting out in 2019, um, there's a lot of mention of Hansard, uh, Hansard records where even the leadership always um, advises members to check with the records of the house, the Hansard reports that we always um, upload in the website. So probably another challenge is that uh, we have uh, no control over the time to upload documents in the website because as soon as we are, we are done with the document, we are supposed to email the same to our ICT department for them to upload. So once we are, we are done with the, with the Hansard reports, we have no control over what time to upload the document. So even as we strive to meet the, deadline, the 48 hour deadline, uh, the publishing bit now is out of our hands. So probably that is also an area that we could, uh, we could, uh, we could now look at so that we can see probably uh, in the in the starting orders when it says 48 hours, at what point does the 48 hours end? Because once the document is ready, but uh, the consumer has not uh, uh, to retrieve the document, have we achieved the 48 hours? That's why I don't know. And also, uh, we have seen a lot of appreciation from other departments uh, where they come for us for these documents to use, probably during their, their meetings. Uh, also, uh, our outside stakeholders. We've seen a lot of our external stakeholders coming in to request the Hansard from the Global Culture Assembly. So, um, that to me is an indication that. Uh, uh, Hansard is increasingly uh, getting visible to our stakeholders and it's uh, something positive that really motivates us to do good work for the, for the legislature, for our legislatures. Um, also, I want to mention that um, in terms of record keeping, we have, uh, we have a mini server, we are lucky to have our audio officers of an audio officer who has uh, come up with a mini server where our audio records and the answer reports are stored for, for, for future retrieval. So I also wish to request that uh, probably tomorrow morning, if you can get uh, some space, we can allow Mr. Sart to come and share what uh, we have been able to 
come up as the director of Hansa to be at the Outer Semi of uh, Mombasa. Mm. I think um, I've mentioned the uh, challenge, our challenges in terms of equipment, and we also have a challenge. We have not set uh, back to all the indexing bit because we lack uh, expertise in this area. Uh, but uh, uh, we have discussed this matter with our leadership, and uh, uh, plans uh, plans plans are there for for support from external trainers to assist us uh, to develop this capacity. So um, I think I should end there. Thank you very much for listening. Asante sana. Asante sana la Ikipia, Tanzania, Lamu, West Pokot, National Land Commission, and Mombasa. Uh, you can take your leave and give them a, a round of applause as they take their leave. Ni kama imeisha. Inaonekana imeisha leo. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Vice President, the one I call Madam President, please come say anything you want to say and probably call your president and dissolve this meeting. Yeah, today. We are in job one. Hello, good evening. Where? Okay. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite uh, the president for an announcement about tomorrow, and then I'll come back for another announcement. Thank you. Uh, good evening, colleagues. You realize that uh, we have really covered a lot. But uh, tomorrow, we would like to start a bit early. Uh, tomorrow, the clerk of the Senate and Secretary to Parliamentary Service Commission will be here together with the Deputy Clerk, Eunice Gishangi. And you know very well that uh, the clerk of the Senate is our patron. So I want all of us that tomorrow morning, let us be here early. We'll, we will start with the Majid tomorrow morning on this the place of the Hansard in the IA world. And uh, this, is, this one marries with our theme. So it's a very important. That's why we have said we will not go it th through now, but tomorrow morning. And tomorrow we will start exactly at nine. Ata kama tutakuwa wawili watatu, we'll have to do so because of the interest of the time. And why we are we are saying so? We you 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 see we had a, we had a slotted a closing ceremony in the afternoon, but now we want to bring it forward from eleven so that in the afternoon after lunch we all disperse. Is that okay? Instead of coming back after lunch. I was suggesting we start at eight. What is your feeling? Just to that. Ah. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a proposal from my senior that we start from eight. Is it okay? And, and you know, this evening we are going to have enhanced dinner. I hope, I hope it will not make us not be here. So what time do you want us? You know, we, have, we work in the democratic institutions. What time do you want us to be here tomorrow? Nine. Can I suggest this? Can we be here at 8.30 so that at nine we start? I have used to study order number one. So we'll be here at 8.30. Sarasa. Then, um, for the enhanced dinner, I will now call, by, I'll call the vice president to come and tell us where we will have, we'll enjoy our enhanced dinner. Thank you. Uh, good evening once more. Enhanced dinner has been there since morning. So we'll have our enhanced dinner and interaction at Party Island. It's a long 
uh, it's called Moy South Road, like that one, Barbara, you in Natumia. And it starts at exactly eight. So you have enough time, go prepare, come for the dinner. Thank you very much. Uh, when is Party Island? It's called Party Island. Party Island is along my South Lake Road. I've said eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, enhanced dinner. Let's leave at your own pleasure after dinner. Smart, casual, dinner dresses, whatever. Just come the way you want. Hi, Mukusana Sivaisha. Let's go prepare for dinner.